Hey guys, Ike here from Ike'sOutdoors.com. I'm here today to show you guys what I carry in my pack. I'm also going to do a separate video showing you guys what I carry in my truck. Yeah, some of the stuff I carry in my truck, if, unless you're a guy who hunts on the road and does a lot of traveling, you're probably not going to need. Some of it's pretty basic stuff, but some of it you're really probably not going to need. But the stuff I carry in my pack, I'm going to show you that today. And it is a little bit cool today. It's about 55, 60 degrees and my old neck's swelling up. Hunting season is about four days away and boy I cannot wait so I'm gonna show you what I got in my pack it's pretty much all ready to go and the first thing is is this is a Nimrod pack what this is is what this is a harness style pack um, this part it goes around your fan your waist like a fanny pack and it has a couple of shoulder straps on it I love this pack uh, really nice I got bad shoulders and it's pretty pretty nice and pretty forgiving on my shoulders um, on one of the shoulder straps I've got a small pouch and in it I carry a knife. If you've seen any of my videos before of a bag dissection, you've seen this knife before. I've carried this thing with me for years. And it's a case, tough as nails, cannot beat a case knife. And uh, I like it because it's multi-purpose. It's got serrated edge on it. Good and sharp. This thing holds a great edge. I don't use it for gutting. I, I, I have used it for gutting deer before in the past. You know, if you need a knife, you forget your other knife. This is an excellent knife. I always carry an extra knife on me. If I get separated from the knife I carry on my side, I've always got this knife in my pack. So, if, if I get separated from my pack, hopefully I've still got the knife on my side. But that's a good multi-purpose knife and really comes in handy for a lot of different things. On the other shoulder, I carry a limb saw. This is a Wicked Tree Gear limb saw. You can tell by looking at it. Uh, this thing, I've had it for three or four years now. Great limb saw. Absolutely no complaints about this thing. Love this limb saw. So, I uh, carry a limb saw there as well. One of the things I carry on a lanyard on my shoulder pack is a firefly. And what this is, is it's a wind detection system, which is not going to work in here. Got buildings on both sides of me. But this has a compass, and I just push the button, and it tells me precisely what wind direction, uh, what direction the wind is coming out of. So that's a pretty handy piece of equipment. And like I said, this is called a Firefly. This is a it, for the. It's a little bit expensive, but it's a very, very nice piece of equipment to have. It tells you the precise wind direction every time. Got a couple pockets on the front here, and like I said, there's going to be some things in here that I carry that you're probably not going to need. Um, in this pocket I carry my play sport so I can film my hunts also carry an altimeter and this has got weather on it, it's got a compass on it uh, it's got all kinds of different stuff on it that you can tell barometric pressure, current temperature, current time different stuff like that so um, that does come in pretty handy it's not necessarily a necessity I got this one for a little bit of nothing and I really haven't used it a whole lot but I do keep it in my bag just so I can kind of have an idea when a storm front's moving at me, I can check the barometric pressure and I can see if it's rising or if it's falling and kind of see what's going on. Now in my pack here, I carry water and I, this, again, something you're probably not going to need, I carry a flexible tripod. This is nice, I can mount my play sport to it and I can wrap this around the limb in front of me, behind me or whatever and I can film myself with one of my play sports. So, again, probably something you're not going to need. Uh, I carry a little bit of rappel with me. I just don't, I don't use this a whole lot. If I do, I put it on my ears around my face, and that's just about it. Just keeping mosquitoes off of me. Um, my pull-up rope. Keep my pull-up rope in here. I, I try to keep one of these on each tree stand that I that I hang. But I also I hunt out of a climber occasionally, and occasionally I'll go hang a tree stand and forget this. So I always keep one of these in my pack, and I do forget it in the trees sometimes. So I've got four or five of these in my truck in case I need them, but I always keep at least one in my pack. Um, these are bike hangers. You go to Walmart and you can pick these things up for 97 cents and they make excellent bow and bag hangers. Um, I seen something at Walmart the other day that just it kind of made me laugh and it was made by Hawk I believe and it was a tactical bow hanger and this thing was like five bucks and it it looked cool I mean it was really cool but it served no it didn't do the job any better than this 97 cent I don't even know if I paid that much for it less than a dollar so it didn't serve any more of the purpose than this bike hanger right here if you don't like the red paint it black it, it ain't no big deal I mean paint it black early season 
uh, it's no big deal. I've, I've used these for years, never had a problem with deer seeing them or spooking because of them. And they're really, really cheap. I've got a ton of these things. But don't buy into that tactical hype. The thing was black and it looked cool. And they called it a tactical bow hanger and they charged five bucks for it. You could buy a buttload of these things for the price of that tactical hanger. So the, they label everything tactical these days and they charge more money for it. This shirt I'm wearing is tactical. It's not. I got this thing at a flea market for $350 and it was an awesome buy. But they label these things tactical and they charge $30, $40 bucks for them. So uh, don't buy into that tactical hype. It's just that. It is hype. Uh, I got my war paint in here and I've got a... I've got this, which is just black war paint, and I've also got the, the compact, which is war paint. And when it comes to this stuff, man, if you're spending time looking in the mirror with this crap, just don't do it. I, when it comes to this war paint, I just I just grab a couple fingers of different colors and smear it on. So I, I like to use face paint, but I do also have a just a bandana in here for a couple different reasons. One, I can put it on my face. And I can tie it up, cover my face with it. Two, if, if it's cold outside and I don't have something to cover my neck, cover my face, I can use this for some extra warmth. It's not going to add a whole lot, but it's also going to add, it's going to have a little bit of warmth. If I do slip and cut myself or do something stupid like that, I've also got a compress that I can use. I can use it to bind a wound if I have to. So I like to have that in there as well. Um, this is a real avid multi-cutter. It's a multi-tool. It's got a cutter on the outside of it, and I really like this. You get in a tree stand, you need to do a little bit of trimming. It's got that on there. It's also got a couple. Uh, it's got a knife blade on it, which is a a pretty good knife blade if you need an extra knife. It's also got a um, choke wrench. It's got a bunch of different things on it. It's got a limb saw over here, but probably the thing I use the most on this thing is this right here, and that is a screw step starter. You can fold this thing down. If you got your screw steps, you're gonna have to put in screw steps that day. You can fold this thing down and you can use it just like that. Stab the tree with it, turn it a little bit. It's gonna help you get your screw step started. But I like to have a multi-tool in here and that is one specifically made for hunting. So I really like really like the multi-cutter uh, from Real Avid. Uh, headlight, I use a really, really bright headlight. And I don't use it, I actually don't use it that much. It's got an emergency flasher on it, so if I get out and I get hurt, I can switch to the emergency flasher and uh, paramedics or rescue or whatever can come find me. Uh, but it's just a headlight. It's, it is nice and bright. I don't use it much unless I have to. But I've got that in there. I've also got a several backup lights. Um, this is my pride and joy right here. This is a new knife that I got this year, and it's going to spend more time on my hip than it is this bag. It's just in the bag right now. Um, this is a custom made knife made by Rick Kurtek for me. Uh, the stag handle is one I got in Texas and it actually came from an Axis deer. And Rick made this knife for me exactly the way I wanted it. Uh, made it to my specifications and I love this knife. It is razor, razor sharp and Rick's knives are top of the line. Cool thing about this is it sits just like that on your belt too. Absolutely just a bad knife. And I mean, Rick done one heck of a job. Uh, and this thing is shaving sharp. And I don't mean shave a little air, hair off your arm. I mean, you can shave your entire face with this thing. And it's absolutely the best knife I've ever owned. So I carry that in there as well. Let's see what else we got in here. Backup flashlight. Drag rag, just in case. Uh, let's see what's in here. Grunt call. Even though it may not be the time of year to do a lot of grunting and call one in. Sometimes I carry a grunt call with me all the time. And if you get a deer that's kind of nervous and kind of fidgety and doesn't act like it want to, wants to come in, you can't, you're not really going to call them in early season. You know, late season you can you can do some calling and maybe you can get them to come in. But you can do, if you got one that's kind of fidgety in the early season and doesn't really want to come in, you can do a nice little soft call and you can get that thing, maybe you can get it calmed down, maybe you can get it to come in. Yeah, I mean, it's just a nice, here I am grunt, and maybe, maybe it'll convince a deer to come in. So I always carry at least one grunt call with me. Uh, another flashlight, didn't know that was in there. Carry a book of matches, or a box of matches. These are just camp matches, waterproof matches, kind of strike anywhere kind of things. And uh, I carry those with me just in case. You never know. They don't take up much room, and they're pretty, pretty easy, 
uh, they'll help you out of a bind if you get into a bind. The other thing I got in here is smoking sticks. And these, I really ain't going to use these till, till probably the rut, but they're just in here all the time, what kind of one of those things. And the way I use these is I'll light these things up, and I'll actually set them with the wind in my face, and I'll set them out in front of me and let the wind carry the scent of these sticks right across my body. So if anything does come in downwind of me, hopefully this will mask my scent enough to um, convince that deer that I'm not there. The last thing I carry is something, um, I carry two of these, and it's just for good luck and it's just for superstition, I'm sure you guys have them too, um, there's a buckeye, and buckeyes are supposed to give you good luck, and this buckeye right here, um, my dad gave me, no it's this one, this one, this buckeye my dad gave me when I was a kid, and I always carry it in my pack, and I carry it when I'm hunting. Um, just for good luck and for my get my dad gave it to me you know it, it's it's sentimental and my dad's been gone for 16 years now so uh, my dad gave me this just as, as something to give me some good luck when I deer hunt and I always carry this buckeye with me and you can I know this is his because it's got the spot where I, I'll sit there and tree stand sometimes and rub my thumb across it uh, it's just that's the buckeye my dad gave me and I carry it with me uh, I've carried it with me ever since I've started hunting. And someone actually broke into my Jeep a couple years ago and stole my pack and stole a bunch of my hunting gear. And all I wanted back was this. That's all I wanted back. I didn't give a damn about the rest of it. All I wanted back was this Buckeye. And I ended up getting it back. And I was really, really happy and really relieved to see this Buckeye and to get this thing back. Um, the other Buckeye was given to me by another Another man who's passed away, it was given to me by uh, Bob Sheldon Sr. Uh, when I first started becoming a bow technician and first started in the archery business, he let me come into his shop and set up as a bow technician. He gave me my first job as a bow technician and he had a, a buckeye tree out there and he gave me this buckeye and uh, just for good luck, you know. And uh, Bob was, was killed about three months after he gave me this buckeye. So I carry both those buckeyes with me to keep remind me of the man who started me hunting and the man who pretty much started Ike's Outdoors. Um, well, both of them pretty much started Ike's Outdoors. But So I carry them with me for good luck and for sentimental reasons because both of these came from people who made a big, big impact in my life. And I'm getting kind of emotional now, so... <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up, but that's what I carry in my pack. Uh, some of this stuff, like I said, you're not going to need. Some of it you may need, and I may end up, I add, as the year goes on, I add uh, scent to this bag, uh, doe scent, stuff like that. I don't carry cover scent with me because I carry it into my truck, but as the year goes on, it gets closer to the rut, I'll put in some doe and ester scent, stuff for my drag rag, uh, things like that. I'll put in a, a rattle bag and maybe another grunt call, but that's pretty much it. I'll add just those few things, and and I'll pretty much be set. I, I will I will add extra uh, an extra release too. I don't have my backup release right now. A friend of mine has, uh, got it using it, but I will put an extra release in here as well. So in case I forget my back tension release at home, I can I can have it in here, and I'll put in as the temperatures get colder. I'll put in small things like some extra gloves and a, a, something for my face, an extra stocking hat, something like that to keep me warm. But this is pretty much the basics of my of my pack and what I carry a majority of the time. I try to keep it simple. I do also carry this camera and a camera arm for putting up in the tree occasionally too. But the best thing to do is try to keep it simple and kind of <laughs> make sure you got all your bases covered at the same time. You don't want to be carrying a pack that's 40 pounds uh, full of a bunch of stuff you don't need. And over 20 years of experience uh, of hunting, and this is the stuff that I've came to find that. I use it from year to year and, and it, it gets used, it doesn't just sit in my pack, it's the stuff that I carry with me all the time and stuff that actually, like I said, does get used. So I'm uh, going to do another video here as soon as I get this one done on what I carry in my truck so be sure to check back with us on that one. Uh, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit us up on Facebook, go over there and give our page a like. I'm really active on Facebook so if you want to know what I'm doing, which I don't know why you guys would, but you want to know what I'm doing and what's going on with Ike's Outdoors, uh, go to Facebook, which we'll put that link below, and like the page, and you'll see what's going on there, and, and 
Uh, for more product reviews and how-to videos, be sure to check out our website, ikesoutdoors.com. Appreciate you guys.